Hello, my name is Chad Sansing. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the product manager at Preview. Uh, I live on the traditional lands of the Monacan people, also known as Virginia in the United States, with my family and a dog named Sleepy who drives me a little bit nuts. Let's see. I think this is the window to share. Indeed, it is. Uh, so when you visit prereview.org, you will see a page just like this. There's one important distinction, though. I'm going to demo for you today on our sandbox site. This is our test site. Uh, it's open to the public. So if you're curious about what it's like to use prereview, you could visit sandbox.prereview.org first, try things out without worrying about actually publishing anything uh, and just get a feel for things before you dive into starting your own pre-reviews on prereview.org. So um, when you come to this page, I'm logged in. So this button at the top right says log out for you. It will say log in. You can click on this to register for the site as well. And all you need to create an account on prereview.org is an ORCID ID. Once you create an account, You'll get both a public profile with whatever name is associated with your ORCID ID, as well as a pseudonym, a pseudonymous profile that will be like a color plus an animal name. For example, uh, well, you should never share yours, but I'm on the product team and I do demos all the time. So I will tell you, as an example, my pseudonym is Yellow Hornet. And so when I publish pre-reviews, I can let people know that it's coming from me and I can connect it to my ORCID account as a peer review activity, or, you know, for whatever reason, maybe I'm worried about um, professional retaliation or offending, you know, a researcher in my field who's known to be a little vindictive when they get, uh, you know, uh, honest feedback, I could use my pseudonym. And no one else needs to know your pseudonym at all. Uh, we keep the pseudonyms secure in our database, but we don't ever go and kind of look at pseudonyms when people sign up. We only go when there's something having to do with our code of conduct and we need to check something out. Maybe somebody used a pseudonym to, to pan an attack piece or something like that. We'll go and we'll investigate further as we need to, but we don't use those pseudonyms for anything else either. Now, after you've logged in or registered with us, you can visit your My Details page, which is like a settings page for your profiles. Again, this is something only you will see. So I'm going to share mine with you as an example, since I work more in product than actually in publishing reviews. Uh, and you can see on this page, it lists my name, the ORCID ID that I registered with, and my pseudonym right at the top. Those pieces of information will always be there. And then I have some choices. There's a lot of control you have as a user on pre-review meant to keep you safe, secure, confident in your pre-review activities. So I can connect to my ORCID profile, in which case pre-review will share my pre-reviews, the published ones, with the peer review section of my ORCID profile. So you can get some recognition there for your peer review activity on pre-review.org. We've recently added the ability to add an avatar or an image, if you'd like, that you can take down at any time. You can connect your account on pre-review.org with your account on our community Slack if you want folks to be able to find you between both places. You don't have to. You can disconnect at any time. Um, your email address, uh, you can change for when we might contact you uh, about opportunities, I don't know, uh, to learn about the newest features on pre-review. That's what we'll use. Uh, or if we need to contact you about a technical issue with a pre-review. Again, that's what we'll use right there. Then you can let people know if you are open for review requests. When they visit your profile on preview.org, they can see if you'd like to be contacted on Slack or not about reviewing something else. You can say yes to that. You can say no to that. And you can also change the visibility, so to speak. So you could share it only with other people who have preview accounts. You could share it publicly with everyone who visits our site, or you could share it not at all. Same thing with your career stage, early, mid, or late. Same thing with your research interests. And you can type these in. There's not a set list that's going to limit you. You can put in whatever interests you. You can put your location in if you would like. And again, manage all of the visibility or who gets to access that information any way you would like. And you can share languages as well. Some of our clubs, which are collaborative review groups, are based around uh, language groups or affinities for reviewing in particular languages. And so that can help people find you as well and invite you to different opportunities to review in your preferred language on prereview.org. And then way back at the top of the page, once you have everything set up just the way you like, you can view your public profile as other people see it, just to double check it's the way you want it to be. So mine looks a little bit like this, you know, very similar. 
And you can see about halfway down the page, there's a notice that, yep, you can contact me. I'm happy to you know, take requests for reviews. And then you'll see a list of my pre-review activity. These are all kind of just example fake reviews. They're not real. They will not show up ever on pre-review.org, but they're here so that you can see how your pre-review activity might be listed on your profile. Then perhaps not surprisingly, if I go to my pseudonymous profile, so I can you know check out how that displays for other people, it's just gonna be my pseudonym and the review activity that's connected with that pseudonym. Nothing else to identify you ever. Going back to pre-review for a moment, um, the main call to action here, of course, is to review a preprint. Though you can find more information up top. You can visit our blog for news. You can check out the clubs page to see if there's a group that's doing reviews together that you might like to join. Uh, but the main mechanism of action here on pre-review is review a preprint. And so when you click that button, the first thing it's going to ask you for is the DOI, the identifier of the preprint you'd like to review. And there's often a little bit of helper text in this workflow to help you better understand what we're talking about. If it's not, you know, clear or obvious from the start, uh, you can always let us know that we're always trying to improve the site, but the helper text is there for you as well. You may not know this, but in our Slack community, we've recently started a request to review channel. We're using something called the core notify protocol and a pilot right now with bio archive and Cielo where their users can actually request reviews on our Slack channel from those preprint servers, but folks can also type in requests to this channel as well. And it looks a bit like this. Um, right now, we have these nice threaded requests where the first message gives us some keywords so we can quickly scan to see if a review is appropriate or relevant for us. So this says, um, Timothy here is seeking pre-reviews for a preprint on working memory, inhibition, and brain network topology. If you're interested, see more below. And if you click on the replies to see more below, you get a bit more information. You get the actual name of the preprint and a link to it. You get a little bit of the abstract and you get an opportunity to start your preview, pre-review right there in Slack. It'll take you right back to the site. Uh, I'm not gonna click that button because I don't wanna go to the real preview.org today, just the sandbox. So I'm gonna visit the article itself. Here's the preprint loading now. I'm gonna grab the DOI from the top of it. And it's just as simple as copying and pasting it. I'll come back, I'll paste it in there, and I'll hit continue. There we go. I get a snippet of the abstract. This lets me make sure I have the right preprint that I want to review, and I'm ready to start. I have three choices of how to start my pre-review. Uh, I can start a structured pre-review with prompts. This is great in like a learning environment because you'll get structured questions that model how to think through a review. You can also start with a template. It's a very lightweight template, just like the structure Vanessa just shared with you. Or if you choose the button for I've already written the review, maybe you've composed it in Google Doc or an Etherpad or something, you can just copy and paste it right in. I'm gonna show you the structured review today uh, because it also has text boxes in it so you can see how you can add comments in addition to um, choosing your responses uh, and adding your review to a text box is the same exact thing if you work with the template or you've already written the review. So let's try it out. We'll, we'll click on with prompts, we'll hit continue. And you can see now I'm gonna be guided through a series of questions. So the first one is, you know, does the introduction explain the objective of the research presented in the preprint? Uh, I'm gonna say yes. And I'm gonna say, there's a thorough explanation. So once you choose yes, partly, no, I don't know, you'll get a text box where you can offer more specific and constructive feedback if you have it. I'll save and continue, and I can go right through each question. I don't have to leave additional comments, but I always can. So this is just an example review. So I'm just gonna click highly appropriate and clear for most of these answers, take us through these questions, and then show you the last few stages of publishing your pre-review. So here we go, here's a question. Would it benefit from language editing? You can say no, there might be some minor issues, but there's nothing in the way of uh, clarity or understanding. Or you could say, yes, there, there might be some errors or something here that um, it would be helpful to fix just in terms of the language. And again, you get this box here. So you could say something like, a few of the sentences have awkward structures. Like in, I don't know, paragraph five of page two. And then you could even provide an example sentence if you wanted to. 
So again, not a lot of judgment here, just a little bit of, uh, is there anything getting in the way of understanding? If not, great. If so, give an example of something that might be fixable. We can continue. Would you recommend the preprint to others? Yes, it's of high quality. Yeah, it needs a little bit of improvement. Or no, not yet. Is it ready for attention from an editor, a publisher, a broader audience? Is this something that you feel is ready to advance in the scholarly communications pipeline? You can say, sure, as it is. You could say, yes, after some changes. Or you could say, you know, no, not yet. It needs revisions. Then you get to choose which name you'd like to use. You can use your public profile or your pseudonymous profile. Again, if you'd like a little more privacy and security, just because of the nature of your feedback, perhaps, or um, the recipient. But I'll go ahead and publish this under my name. Did I review this preprint with anyone else? Uh, you can say, no, I reviewed it alone. Yes, but they don't want to be listed. Or yes, and they all would like to be listed. And I'll click on that because recently we've added a uh, multiple authors workflow to this publication uh, process here. Um, you do have to assert that the folks you've written it with have read and approved the pre-review for us. And then you can go ahead and add their names. So I could add myself at another, you know, at my personal email, let's say. And what this will do is it will prompt pre-review to send the people that you list an email asking them to confirm their participation. And again, to let us know if they'd like to be listed with their public ID or their student. So again, safety all around. We'll hit save and continue. Um, there's an option to add another author five authors, six authors, however many authors. I'll say no, no other authors. We'll continue. We have a uh, window here for competing interests. So for example, if you authored the preprint, probably don't want to publish your own review of it, uh, but maybe some of these other pieces here in this helper text come up. Maybe you collaborate with the author, uh, you're a rival or a competitor of the author. I'm going to say no. Uh, just please note that it is part of our code of conduct that if you have a competing interest, you declare it here. Save and continue. Uh, we also ask you to assert one more time with some examples of expected behaviors and prohibited behaviors that you're following the code of conduct in your pre-review. If you assert that you are, the process can continue. And then you get an opportunity here to check everything over before you publish. So you could change your name back to your pseudonym or from your pseudonym back to your public name. If you say, oh, maybe that is a competing interest. You can go back and list it. You can change any of your answers. You can go back and edit uh, any of your text. And when you're all ready, when everything is the way you want it to be, you click publish your pre-review and there it is. It will get its own DOI from Zenodo. It will be displayed on Zenodo. It will be displayed on pre-review.org. And then there's a couple of little pointers here about what happens next. Um, some places you might share your review on Society, LinkedIn, Twitter. And then there's a link to schedule an interview with me if you'd like to give feedback about the process. We love to do user research interviews. We love to keep making things better and better. So if ever you have you know, some feedback for us about how we could change this, how we could make it work better for you, please don't hesitate to schedule time to talk with me. And uh, I would love to know what you think of pre-review.org. Now, on Sandbox, this doesn't actually happen. So this pre-review will be listed on my Sandbox profile, but it will not go to Zenodo. It will not ever be listed on preview.org. So again, if you're at all nervous about using preview, you'd like to try some things out, Sandbox is the place for you so that when you're ready, you can publish and get recognition for your peer review activity on preview.org and your ORCID profile. I probably went over, so I'm gonna stop there. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them.